Welcome to a repot video. Finally, my beautiful Renantha Caloptera is going to go into a fancy snazzy orchid top, but I'm switching it from bark to lava rock. And as part of the masterclass playlist and series edition, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to put this one into the masterclass because I'm going to go into a little bit more detail as to why I am choosing the media that I am choosing, not just because it's inorganic, but the reasoning behind why I'm setting up my orchid the way I'm going to. First of all, though, this is not necessarily a transition. I do not want this to be misunderstood as a transition from organic to inorganic media. This is giving the orchid what it already knows, but using inorganic media as opposed to chunky bark. So please don't think of it as a transition tutorial. That is not my intention here at all. Okay, obviously we have to get our Renanthera out of the pot. And as per usual, even if I were to go back into the organic media she's accustomed to, I would still wait for new roots to grow. It matters not if I can help it, if the orchid is okay, that the orchid is going into the same media. I always prefer to wait for new roots to grow. And if I'm not mistaken, I have a root tip underneath here, which we are going to have to be super mindful of. So let's get her out of the pot and see what we're up against. This shouldn't really take that long. Famous last words, right? <laughs> Now I have come prepared. I've got large lava rock, hopefully enough to fill up an orchid top, which I will talk through which different sizes I could use, which I am going to use. I've also got a little bit of medium sized lava rock for reasons. Should we get to that point? If not, I will explain why I have that for any eventuality. And I've got ceramis as well, just in case. You never know what is in the middle of this little pot right here. And I happen to have Siliano having his free flight in the living room and he's super happy and he will be chiming in on occasions. So thank you Siliano for your approval or disapproval. Now, gotta be mindful of that root tip. Also mindful of the, whoa, we actually have one growing out at the base of the pot. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that was not the case a couple of days ago. Yeah, I'm behind on this. What a shame. I really don't want to lose that root tip. Any root tip for that matter. I've been watching this orchid for months, starting on roots, and uh, it's taken forever, in my opinion. And Renanthers, to my understanding, from what I've noticed with my Mona Chica, they are not, not fast root growers. So everything she's given me here is, ooh, fundamental. So I'm just squeezing, oh, ever so lightly and making sure that my hand is on the base of the orchid by the stem, but not Thank you, woohoo. Not touching the root tip that is at the surface. Nothing is stuck to the bottom of the pot. Here she comes, okay. Just give her a very gentle shake. See what comes off. I think the weed can go by now, what do you say? That's the weed that has grown into the bark. <laughs> Now we just have to weed that out <laughs> from the Renanthera root. There we go. <laughs> Goodness me. No, I'm not trying to protect the root of the weed. <laughs> just making sure it wasn't a root tip. Okay. Let us see. Let us see. Now, it is not necessary when repotting into inorganic media to get all the bark off. Whatever falls off naturally, that's great. Whatever doesn't, I will opt to leave it, even though it may appear to be weird. But my intention here is to protect the velamen of the old root system. 
And in this instance, I am also going to say that my intention here, protecting the old root system, the old Valayman here, is also why I'm going to be potting her up the way I'm going to explain to you right now, after I've washed my hands. I would like to remove this sheath at the base here from the dead leaf. Renantheras and stem rot. Yeah, they're very compatible. So I would like to take advantage and avoid having that happen by removing this little sheath. At least we've done our due diligence. It'd be great if we could get this bit off as well. And make sure there's no pests lurking in there. Let's see. That better just be dust. Bear with me while I try to get rid of this. I want to see what, what that was. There may have been a start of mealybugs at the base there, but it's too early to tell. And if that was the case, hey, they're gone. Right. Let's discuss pot size. I always opt for orchid top when it comes to my renantheras, but because orchid tops are super, super expensive, and these used to be filled with orchids, <clears throat> yes, I went and chose some soap dishes out of the dollar store. We have a little Chinese outlet here that really sells cheap stuff. Same effect and only cost me a euro, two euros. Same effect as the orchid tops with their wide open spaces and airiness, etc. Except this would be a five-star hotel kind of thing and this would be your drive-in motel kind of thing. But both have a bed and both can be slept in. Now, we will not discuss bed bugs. Thank you. <laughs> not in this video. Anyway, I have two sizes. There's a small and there's a medium. And you can see that the orchid itself would fit perfectly into the small. That is an absolute great, great fit. For me though, it's not going to fit long enough. Renanthera roots will go in all kinds of directions and it's going to get a little bit tedious with that root already extending beyond the perimeter within a couple of weeks if it continues to grow. So I am opting for the oversized orchid top and you would say, well, that looks silly. It does. I'm thinking positively. I'm thinking into the future. Because this is the oversized pot, and because this pot is oversized for the current root system, and having seen that outside the orchid had chunky bark, but inside, this was all on the outside of the orchid, but the root bowl was in seedling bark, I have two different sizes of lava rock, that will give me the same impression around the old root system, the old Valayman seedling bark style water retention, which is the same as using medium sized bark. That is the same water retention, the equivalent, so to speak. And in order to simulate what we saw in the nursery pot, seedling sized bark in the center and it moved out to chunky bark, it's exactly what we're going to do with the lava rock. Nothing's going to change. What I'm doing now is adding some plain RO water to help me buffer the weight and the coarse texture of the lava rock to not bash against the velamen as we put lava rock in and around the orchid. I just love this. One last look. Look, there's even a root tip right here. Oh, just love it. Like I said, one last look before we bury it. Now, because the pot is oversized, what we're going to do is help with the wicking process into the actual lava rock by putting a layer of ceramis right at the base of the orchid top. We're just gonna let that soak, saturate, and eventually it will sink. So just for you to see, there's like two fingers of a layer of ceramis. If you were wanting to do something similar as you start to, you know, get more interested in organic media or other kind of media, organic media is getting too expensive. If you cannot source ceramis locally, you can opt for pumice or 
very, very small lava rock as well. Even though it doesn't have a wicking property, it has high water retention properties, which is exactly what we want to simulate what the Valayman had prior to us moving it into inorganic media. Okay, we can stand here all day and all night. I'm happy with what has settled down at the bottom right now. I don't like to work with wet ceramics. It's just a thing that I have. It sticks to my hands. It is easier for me to work with it while wet. So if you think, yeah, she could have done this before and then it would have settled, that is true. But the moment I add the water into the container that I want to use to protect my velamen, that ceramics will float because it is that porous that even when it is saturated, it takes a long time to actually remove all the bubbles. But we have ourselves already a layer that has settled. So now we're going to check with our orchid. And I'm going to be very reluctant to touch her at the base because it's late in the day. And I want to get this done, but I don't want my wet fingers to cause any issues like stem rot. So I like the height where she's at specifically because of that one root. But we can take her up a little bit more. And with that, I'm adding now the medium lava rock just to raise her up. So if you want to think organic media, that would be sphagnum moss at the base of the pot and then medium sized bark around the orchid root. <laughs> but that is not what this is about. And then because she had seedling bark in the middle, I'm just going to add a little bit of smaller lava rock around the middle, just a little bit. This is only to help her along until she gets a little bit more established in this oversized pot and gets her mojo going when the roots then start to grow into the larger sized lava rock. Found this beautiful piece of large lava rock right there, which I can put snug under the base. And now it's just a matter of playing a little game of Tetris. If you see the layman in the process of any repotting, that is this color green, as opposed to a green that's over here, both of them are viable. This light green means that it is newer, fresher, and has had a lot more access to moisture than the older green one back here. Yes, there is algae on the bottom. That's not the green I mean. I'm referring to the chartreuse yellowy green that you see here, which is so much fresher as opposed to the older one back there. That one needs to be respected with the same kind of access to water around the velamen as it had before. And for that reason, I'm putting small lava rock around it. The small lava rock has a lot of more water retention than the large lava rock, obviously. But that's my reasoning that this one gets a little layer around it of small lava rock, which I'm going to wet straight away. Lava rock will not desiccate, but I don't want this to be sitting out without any water touching that old velamen. And now all I want to do actually is get another piece of lava rock down in there. But that's just me being silly and pedantic. I'd like to see if I can get this root down, growing down into the media by leaving this whole little ravine gap kind of thing and see if the root itself will find its way down all by its lonesome. There is no risk at this point in time for this root tip to dry out if I didn't bash it unbeknownst to me during the process of this repot. There's also a lot of humidity as prior in the other pot with the seedling and the chunky bark for the root to get the hint I want it to go down there. And I will be positioning the orchid on the shelf 
in exactly the same direction, position, location as she was previously as well. And I'm going to use this rogue little bit of lava rock to do what I have wanted to do. <laughs> no need for it, but I just want to. And I hope I don't kick myself that I was insistent about it and now make a mistake. Nothing wrong with that gap down there. This is just me now wanting to finish the job off. There we go. Now, that's it. That's all there is to it. The care is exactly the same as if she were in bark. And once again, this was not a transition. This could have been bark to bark, but in my case, I prefer to choose lava rock. There's a bit of layering. We still have the seedling kind of climate around the roots that were accustomed to small seedling water retentive bark. And we have the large layering around the edges, which is the same as large bark, which is less water retentive. I hope that the lighting was okay. I'm not entirely sure. I've had sun cloud, sun cloud. <laughs> anyway, I also hope this was interesting for you and I appreciate your time. If you have any questions, the comments are there for a reason and I welcome them. Even if you just want to say hi, please go ahead and say hi. Love hearing from you. A video about the exact substitutes and how to work with them is in the works, but orchids do what orchids do and I can't work as fast as they sometimes grow and get ahead of me clearly as this. So that video hasn't come out yet. Ideally, I would have loved to have had that one out first so I could refer to it, but when it comes out, it will be linked in this description. In the meantime, I'm tending to the orchids as they show me the right signs because there is still time in my climate. But the window of opportunity is closing and I did not want her in that nursery pot throughout the winter. <laughs> Just a little add-on. Thank you very, very much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.